Hello, Toss Mike. One, two, hello. 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 Alright. Alright, so good afternoon once again. Uh, my grade uh, 8 science class. Um, today we'll be uh, having an, another lesson. No, uh, This is actually your second to the last lesson, I think, uh, for the uh, for this topic, no, which I uh, decided to will be ending up in this uh, in this lesson about genetics, no. Um, we're left with only two more lessons before we're going to, um, you know, around, uh, culminate everything already. So, uh, as a way for us to be uh, able to see a, and foresee what will be happening for the next week, um, I'll be dividing this lesson into a shorter lesson. For example, in this lesson that we have, we, since we have two left, and the two left, I'll be dividing that one into two parts because... Um, I think the lesson will be really very complicated. That's the reason why in this uh, in this video right now you'll be uh, seeing me writing something on the whiteboard, yeah, because this is some sort of a problem solving. So, ganito na yung kwa natin, no? ganito na yung setup natin, especially if you think that uh, hindi lang puro nababasa or mapapanood yung uh, nakikita natin sa slide, but this time this is more of a demonstration. So, hindi pwedeng I isagad ko lahat na buo na ituturo ito sa inyo kasi malilito kayo. Alright, so that's the reason why um, today we'll be talking about what we call your gen uh, Mendelian genetics. Let's uh, dive right into it. Alright. So let's go now no, to what you call your Mendelian genetics. I hope it loads. Alright, so... We call that one your Mendel's law, or simply what you call your Mendelian genetics. Um, to be specific, uh, there are two types of your uh, genetics. No, there are what you call uh, there is what you call your non-Mendelian genetics and your Mendelian genetics. When you talk about your Mendelian genetics. This is actually being governed by what you call your Mendel's law, based on his uh, the results of his experiment. However, at some point, uh, may, meron din tayong mga cases na Mendelian genetics or the laws of Mendel does not apply to a certain organism. That's the reason why there is what you call also your non-Mendelian genetics. However, no, this is for us to be able to, to see first the difference and let's start with uh, Gregor Mendel before we're going to understand what uh, what the non-Mendelian genetics talks about. Alright, so that is the lesson for today. So before going there, let's go first and try to determine the one. Once again, this lesson is actually divided into two parts. So I'll not be finishing all the slides today. No, maybe just the one third of the lesson today because more it's more on demonstration for the rest of the video. All right. So number one, discuss Mendel's three laws of inheritance. However, for today we'll be talking only about one law and try to solve problems about it. Differentiate between the concepts proposed by the three laws. Determine how these concepts play a role and how traits are passed on from one generation to another. This uh, number three is actually the one one of those things that we're going to apply today. And lastly, we have identified the consequences of this law on how traits are inherited. Alright, so let's dive in right away to Mendelian's inheritance. Alright, when you talk about your Mendelian's inheritance or Mendelian genetics, no, the inheritance of a trait is determined by a factor, the gene, no, which actually is the one found in your nucleus, is actually composed of your DNA. It's actually different codes, unique codes from individual to individual, no, that we can be able to pass later on to our offspring, no. So this is passed from our parents to the offsprings. In that case, in your in your case, kung kayo yon, meron kayo mga genes na nakuha nyo coming from your parents. A heredity factor is in inherited by an organism from each of its parents, right? There are times when the inherited trait may not be observable in an organism but could be observed in future generations. Let's say for example, no, uh, the one that I gave you an example before. Um, one of 
the five-time MVP uh, PBA player by the name of Junmar Fajardo. Junmar stands around 6'10". Alright, so 6 foot 10 inches. However, his parents is actually around just 5 plus feet. No, I think his father is 5'4 or 5'5. Five, five, five. And his mother is around just maybe 5'3, five, 5'2. Five, so how is it possible for short parents to have a very tall offspring or children no so parent si Junmar hindi matangkad pero si Junmar ang grabe yung tangkad all right or in your case maybe you have an equal no bakit bakit yung si mother ko matangkad si father ko matangkad pero ako hindi ako matangkad no or bakit si father ko straight yung buhok si mother ko straight naman yung buhok pero bakit yung buhok ko kulot so mga dududuan na kayo baka ay Kakaampun ako or whatever that is but do not right away jump to that conclusion because then again today we're going to talk about those what are the different things that happened there no so for you to be able to understand this one more no I'd like you to find no a video uh uh sa Amoeba sisters again because they actually makes uh they actually make they actually make very nice uh they call this one videos uh, trying to explain an animation and how, trying to explain no, on how pos the p possibilities of different offsprings are yung paano sinosolve, no? I mean, from this parent to this parent. So, anong chances ng anak? Alright? So, ganun po. This time, we have different terminologies, no? Uh, that you will be encountering because these are really very important things that you need to know. No? So, we have what you call your phenotype, the expressed or observable traits of an organism. Right? So, ikaw matangkad, ikaw brown yung buhok, yung isa bland yung buhok, yung isa straight yung buhok, yung isa kulot yung buhok, yung isa maitim, yung isa maputi. Those are actually observable traits because we can see them no, to our eyes. Therefore, we call that one your phenotype. When you talk about your genotype, this is actually genetic makeup or allelic set of an individual. This is something that we cannot see. No? This is actually the one that is... Uh, Yung mga nakod doon sa mga genes natin, that actually, hindi natin siya makikita. However, your phenotype is being influenced by your genotype. Kung ano yung genotype na nakuha nyo coming from your father and your mother, no? tapos ikaw na yung hybrid ng dalawang genotype na yun, no? meron siyang katumbas na gen a phenotype o yung physical appearance mo base sa nakuha mo from your father and your mother. Alright? So, later on, magagamit natin itong mga terms because these are really very important terms for you to be able to understand later on on how to solve different problems. Alright, so we talk about your homozygous, a condition wherein alleles for a gene are identical. Using letters, it can be written like dalawang capital na R or small, dalawang small, uh, small letter R. This is an alternative term of the true breeding condition. Alright, when you talk about homozygous from the word homo, which means the same. So, whenever we write later on mga alleles, no? alleles are pairs. No? Pairs. When you talk about pairs, dalawa. Whenever we're going to uh, parang represent an allele, we use letters. In this case, pwede gumamit tayo ng letter R. No? So, yung letter R na yon may indicate something. No? In that case, later on, sa example ko, letter T naman ang ginamit ko. But you can use any other letters, no? Uh, it doesn't restrict yung uh, R lang or T lang or whatever. But later on, you'll understand more. When you talk about your homozygous, it only shows here that whenever later on you, you're going to write those allele pairs, yung letter pairs ng homozygous, no? Dapat parehas. Homo, kasi parehas nga, dapat kung capital yung isa, dapat capital din yung isa. Yun yung homozygous. Or, if yung isang maliit na letter, maliit na letter dapat yung kasama niya. Again, pair sila, pares, kaya dalawa. No? And kasi homozygous, dapat pareha sila ng status. Alright? So, yung isa, uh, capital, dapat capital yung partner. Yung isa small letter, dapat small letter din yung partner. Alright? In that case. So, pwede rin yung, is, aside from using the term homozygous, uh, some other books will, uh, will tell you, uh, a thing called true breeding or at some point para sa akin kasi very mahaba na yung term na homozygous no i call this one their pure breed 
pure breed. Kasi nga, pure. Pure sila na capital R, at saka pure sila na small letter R. Pure breed. Right? Puro. Alright? So, yun pong meaning ng homo zygus. When you talk about your heterozygous, no? This is the opposite of the one mentioned earlier about homozygous. Pag heterozygous naman, from the word hetero, meaning different or not the same. So therefore, if you're going to write an allele for it, no? Dapat hindi sila parehas. In this case, gamitin natin ulit yung letter R, no? Na ginamit natin. It can be represented by, kasi nga, hindi sila the same, one capital and one small. No? Hindi pwedeng capital and capital kasi nga, homozygous yun. Or kung small at small, yun naman, homozygous pa rin. So when you talk about your heterozygous, it should be capital and small. Be mindful that we're, if you're going to write this one, the capital goes first. Write it first before the small letter, okay? Wag, po, wag nyo pong gawin na small letter muna tapos followed by a capital letter. Nakakalito po yun. Alright. Oh, ito naman. With your homozygous and your heterozygous comes now also two terms that are really very important, no? So here, when you talk about, kasi ito nga, no, yung pinaka-first na law ni, uh, ni uh, Gregor Mendel is actually based on these two types of your alleles, alright? When you talk about your dominant allele, this is actually the allele that dominates. As I mentioned last time in the previous video, no? Yung pwede kang maging, for example, si parent mo, no? Yung si father mo matangkad, si mother mo pandak. Pero ikaw matangkad. So, ang tanong ba doon, lahat ba ng genes mo kinuha mo lang ba kay father? No. Hindi. Kasi, Yung anak talaga, 50-50, na nakuha from father and mother. No? So, si father matangkad, si mother panda, pero ikaw matangkad. So, ang tanong dyan, yung genes mo ba pure na nagaling kay father? Again, answer is no. Because, meron kang 50% na maku nakuhang matangkad na gene kay father, and meron kang nakuhang 50% na pandak na gene kay mother. However, because of the dominance or the law of dominance, mas nag-dominate o naging dominante, mas malakas yung gene ni father na tinabunan na yung pandak na gene ni mother. Kaya nga, ikaw naging matangkad. Then again, meron ka pa rin short gene sa body mo, pero lang kasi mas nag-dominate or dominate at dominant alil yung kay father, kay mother, recessive alil Meaning yung recessive, medyo the weaker expression or the weaker gene. So, meron kang 50 na 50% na nakuha kay father ulit, kay mother uh, 50%, si father matangkad, si mother pandak. So, si father more or less kwano, um, dominant yung alil niya compared kay mother. Kaya nung mapunta sa'yo, si father mo matangkad, si mother mo pandak, pero ikaw matangkad. Kasi nga, dominant yung gene ni father kaysa kay mother. So, nandyan na sa'yo yung dalawa, 50-50, pero mas nag-dominate yung alil ni father. So, yun na ngayon po tinatawag nating dominant and recessive. Yung recessive, medyo yung yun yung, yung, ano, yung uh, medyo mahina or, or the weaker expression. Tapos, the dominant yung medyo the stronger expression. In this case, hindi nila sinabi kung paano natin isulat. no? Pero, whenever you, you write your dominant alil, you write it in capital letters. Alright? Pag recessive naman, write it in small letters. No? Alright. That's the reason why. When you talk about your, this one, no? Example natin itong R and R dito. Itong capital letter R dito is a dominant allele. And the small letter R here is actually your recessive allele. So later on, i-interpret natin yan. Then again, what's so amazing with this one is that, no? Kung alam natin yung gene ni father and ni mother, pwede nating i-predict kung ilan yung chance na pwedeng maganito yung anak nila. Alright? So, we have four chances with different, kung ano, magkakaiba-iba yan. Kaya later on, makikita natin by using a certain technique. Alright. So, let's go now to the first uh, law of uh, Gregor Mendel. However, actually, na-mention ko na ito eh. 
na explain ko na ito. It's just that, no, whenever you talk about this law, no, actually that law, itong law ni Gregor Mendel, we have the law of dominance, we have the law of segregation, and the law of independent assortment. However, for today, we're going to just talk about the law of dominance. Medyo pupunta tayo konti doon sa law of segregation, pero parang, yung saan tayo nag-start sa law of segregation is where tayo mag-e-end today. Alright, so here, medyo going slightly here sa segregation, but I will be uh, concentrating on the law of dominance. Alright? As I've mentioned in the law of dominance, kung sino yung dominant na gene or dominant na alil, siya yung mas magpapakita. Yun lang po actually. Ito, sabi dito, the law of dominance states that in a heterozygous individual, only one alil will be expressed. No? And the other one will be mask or natabunan. That's actually kasi natatabo naman pag namamask ka. So let's talk about here, no? May, meron tayo dito, si parent number one or si father, sabihin natin si father, actually yung skin niya wrinkled. This is actually pertaining to, kan? to green peas, no? Uh, sige, let's put this one into a green peas na lang. Green peas. Mga plants, you know, yung pea plant na uh, in-experimento ni tawag nito. In-experimento ni experimento ni Gregor Mendel. Alright? So, sa pea plant na lang tayo instead of a father and a mother. So, one parent plant, actually, eh, ano, yung mga seeds niya wrinkled, kulubot. Yung isa namang parent, is, yung ring, yung kanya, yung, yung, yung seeds niya is smooth. So, wrinkled at saka smooth or round. No? So, anong chance? na magkakaroon sila ng anak na mga plants, ano kayang lalabas doon? Wrinkled ba lahat? Or round ba lahat? Alright? Here in the law of dominance, no? ipapakita nito ang different generations. Alright? So usually, pupunta tayo sa pinaka-original generation or the pigeon or the parental generation. After yung parental generation nagkaanak, no, anong gagawin natin? I-cross-pollinate natin. No, or, I mean, cross-pollinate. I-self-pollinate natin or i-breed natin sila ulit yung mga anak kasi pwede naman sa plants yun, hindi pwede sa human na, na pag yung, 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 yung lolo nyo, tapos nagkaanak yung lolo nyo, yung magkakapatid, no, yun yung i-cross-breed, hindi pwede yun. So, we're talking only about plants here. So, meron yung pinaka-original na parent, nagkaanak sila. Yung anak nila, mag-breed. Mag, 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 mag Tapos ngayon, yung, yung, yung mga ito, magkaka, nag-breed nga sila, magkakaanak sila ulit. Ano na namang mangyari? Yung mga anak nila, mag-breed ulit. Alright? Parang ganun. So, we have your parental generation, the F1 generation, or the first filial generation, and the second filial generation. So, this is actually now what you call your ratio, no? Of, let's say, for example, in the parental generation, we have pure breed na purple na flower, and white na flower. Baka sabihin niya later on, ay sir, purple na flower at white na flower, kung magkukross bid yan, yung mga, yung anak nila, medyo lighter na purple or lighter, kasi parang ang parang pintura, pag purple tapos medyo white, i-mix mo, eh medyo parang lighter na purple. Hindi po ganon ang Mendelian genetics. No? Yung mixing na yan is actually included in a non-Mendelian genetics. However, let's not mix first. It's because, no, there are some organisms that follows what you call your Mendelian genetics. So, then again, hindi po pwedeng mix. Alright? Hindi po pwedeng mix. So, pag purple, white yan, ang parent, isa lang ang chance, no, ng mga anak nila, either maging purple or maging white. Hindi po pwedeng light purple. Alright? So, yan po. The cross shows that the white trait did not appear in the first filial generation. Sabi nga dito, no, based on the Mendelian genetics, a pure breed purple flower and a white white na pure breed na white flower nag nag cross sila, nag breed sila. Ang lahat nilang anak purple. So magtataka kayo saan napunta yung puti? E pur isang sabi mo, sabi mo nga sa akin, Sabi nyo nga sa akin, no? uh, sabi ko nga sa inyo, 
'di ba? 50% makuha kay father, 50% kay mother. In this case, 50-50 din actually to. Pero bakit na yung lumabas dito sa anak puro purple? Ngayon, no? Etong mga anak na ito, actually meron tayong apat dito, actually hindi hindi lang isa 'yan. Itong anak na ito dito, ibibreed natin sila, interbreed natin sila. Sa second filial generation, mag-aanak sila. Ngayon, ang lalabas, merong tatlong chance na magiging purple yung anak at may isang chance na magiging white flower yung anak. So, makikita natin ang sinasabi dito sa law of dominance. Pupunta pa sa next and next generation na lalabas si white na, which is actually nandun na sa lola niya. No? Itong white na itong white flower na ito, doon pa sa apo pala lalabas. Hindi lumabas doon mismo sa mga anak nila sa apo na lumabas that's the reason why no we can predict or we can say or hypothesize that in the case of German Junmar Fajardo having parents who are short no baka meron siyang lola dati na matangkad no kasi yung parents niya dito hindi nga matangkad lumabas siya as yung matangkad pero yung makakapatid niya hindi masyadong ganun katangkad No, meron siya makapatid na nakuha talaga mismo kanya father niya. Pero merong pinatago pala itong purple na dito sa first first uh, filial generation. May pinatago siya sa sa loob niya na may kunting white pa. All right, I'll tell you this one later on based on the genotype na. No? So, actually next mention ko na ito, ibasahin niyo na lang ito, no. All right. Um, ito sinabi ko na yung gene genotype and phenotype, no. When you talk about your genotype, this is the genetic code of an individual. This is the information that is found inside the individual cell. So, pwede siyang, let's say for example, when you talk about your, let's use the letter T, which means tall. Alright? Uh, tall or short, kasi dalawa lang naman yan. Pandak or matangkad. So, letter T ang gamitin natin, kan, letter. Alright, so ang gagam, ang kwan natin natin dito, sa genotype, posible maging, no, may tatlong chance ang combination. Either isang capital T or small t, dalawang small na kap, uh, small letter T or dalawang capital letter T. Be mindful lang na yung capital T, capital T po dito is referring to tall gene. Pag short, uh, small letter T meaning short gene, pandak yan. So ano kaya ang interpretation natin pag nakakita tayo ng ganun? Ano kaya ang interpretation pag nakikita tayo ng dalawang small letter T? Or ano kayang interpretation pag nakakita tayo ng dalawang capital letter T? Sa phenotype naman, which is as opposed to your genotype, sabi ko nga, kung ano si genotype, may influensyahan niya si phenotype. Kaya yung andito, now, is actually an interpretation now of what we see or how we see that offspring. So pag ganito daw, tall. Pag gan ay, mali, small to. Dapat small letter ito. Pag ganito naman, short. Pag ganito ulit, dalawang kapital, tall. So ngayon, alam ko, medyo nalilito pa, lilito pa kayo. Pero bakit? Paano to naging short? Paano to naging tall? At paano din to naging tall? I will explain this one later. Alright, so, when assigning letters later on, no, to uh, solving later on, Be mindful that alleles are in pairs. So meaning, hindi po pwedeng tigi isang letter lang. Pares po. Alright? Pairs. Tapos, for dominant allele, sabi ko nga, gamitin natin capital letters. Pag recessive allele, gamitin natin small letters. Now, pag minention niya na homozygous, dapat yung letters na yun, dapat both capital or both small. Depende kung anong sabi. No? So, parang ganito. Ito yung tinatawag natin homozygous combination. Pag heterozygous naman, they should not be the same. One should be capital and one should be small. So, ito. Huh? So, just like this one here, we can say that this is heterozygous, this is homozygous, and this is again another homozygous. Alright? I hope na medyo nakapalo kayo or I think I'm feeding you so lots of information that you are kind of confused right now. Pero, masasolve natin to. I will teach you this one. So, 
Sabi dito, if an alil, ayun, so yun na, sabi ko. However, this is really very important in trying to solve in a Punnett square. Na, ano ba yung Punnett square? Na naglag na yung kwan ko. Alright, um, break muna tayo ng konti kasi naghang yung laptop ko, right? Doon. So, doon na. So, let's continue, no? Alright, medyo magta-touch tayo ng konti with the law of segregation. However, no? Meron tayong tinatawag na Punnett Square. When you talk about the Punnett Square, this is actually a technique for us Alright, sorry. This is a technique that we will be crossing the parents, no? By using what you call your Punnett square. Ito po yung itsura ng Punnett square. Alright? Ito, nandito. So, what you're going to do is you're going to make four boxes. Kasi nga, apat yung chance. Chance, ah? Chance. Hindi po na sinabi natin sa isang panganakan, isang breeding, apat yung anak na lalabas. Hindi po. Pwedeng isa, no? In that case, sa human, usually normal lang po na isa lang talaga. No? Pag twins yan, medyo hindi natin yung considered normal. Pero usually, no? in humans, isa lang po yung expectare nating lalabas na anak. Pero, ang chance na pwede siyang maging ganito, 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 apat po. So, kung parent niya ganito, ang parent niya ganito, or sabihin natin matangkad siya kapandak, no? meron siyang four chances na pwede siyang isa sa doon sa so, apat na yun. So, pwede siyang matangkad, pwede siyang yung isang matangkad, pwede siyang isang pandak o isang pandak. So, depende na lang kung ano yung chance no, na nakuha ng genes apat na yun. Alright? Chances po ito, hindi po ito sa, does not pertain to the number of offsprings. Alright? So, anong technique natin dyan? Gagamit tayo na tinatawag na Punnett Square. At as cross, the results are shown in a box known as your Punnett Square. This is based on a geneticist by the name of Reginald Punnett, no? wherein pwede nating isolve yung mga genotype, then later on, interpret the genotype and what are the phenotypes. Tapos, put into percentage, no? Kung ano ba yung, paano ba, put into percentage, kung anong ilang chances na pwedeng magpaging ganito yung anak. Alright? However, today, no? In that planet square, apat pa lang yung box na yon. Ang ginagawa natin doon is a monohybrid cross. Meaning monohybrid cross, isang trait lang. Oh, so when you talk about tall and short, so height, no? Height lang muna yung pag-uusapan natin. So mono, isa. Height lang muna ang pag-uusapan natin. Kung mag-uusap tayo about color of the flower, color lang. Hindi pwedeng magkuha tayo ng ibang uh, characteristic. Because later on, in a dihybrid cross naman, your four boxes will become 16 boxes. Kaya ayun po yung makikuha natin. So medyo, kaya sinasabi ko, i-divide natin to ngayon. And sa monohybrid cross lang muna tayo mag-stay. Alright. O ito na. No? Start tayo sa isang sample na problem. Ito, gawa ko ito. Right? Suppose a father is a homozygous tall and the mother is a homozygous short. What are the chances of having tall offspring? Again, pag sabi nating homozygous tall, pure na matangkad si father. Tapos homozygous short, ito naman si mother, pure na pandak. So anong gagawin natin? Agagamitin nating letter sa bitage instruction, gagamit daw tayo ng letter T. All right, so anong gagawin natin to? Well, let's assign the, the capitalization. All right? So let T, the capital T be tall, at let small letter T be short. Alright, ganun. Para makita natin yung beef pan. So, yun. Si homozygous tall, ito, tall. Tapos si homozygous short, uh, short, uh, alam na natin ano letter na sa kanya. So, anong, paano natin gagawin ito? Alright, so, dito na tayo magbabase. So, papakita ko yung malaking cam, no? So, anong gagawin doon based sa problem? Gawa tayo ng Punnett Square. Alright, so, tawa ka ng ganun. 
Tapos ganun. Alright. So, ito na actually yung ginagamit nating Punnett Square. Na? Ito, nandito. Alright. Pasensya. Hindi ako masyadong magulo ako magsulat. Punnett Square. Alright. So, anong gagawin natin first? Punta tayo ulit doon sa... Ito, sa problem na ito. No? Ano ang gagawin natin? Punta tayo sa first instruction. Right? Number one, analyze the problem and identify the traits of the parents. So, base po sa sinabi doon sa problem, ito yung problem na nasa taas, the father is a homozygous tall. And, earlier, we assigned a letter that letter T is tall, uh, capital letter T is tall, and the small letter T is short. So, si father homozygous tall, and the mother is homozygous short. Kaya, nakita natin, si parent number one, homozygous tall, which refers to this one. Right? And parent number two is homozygous short, which refers to this one. Now, assign letters based on the traits. We already have assigned, no? The capital T is uh, tall, and the small letter T is short. Right? So, Interpret natin, no? Si homozygous tall. Sabing homozygous, dapat parehas sila ng estado ng letter. And when you talk about alleles, dapat pair sila, di ba? So, ano gagawin dito pag homozygous tall? Pag homozygous tall, no? Meaning, homozygous parehas. Tapos tall, so, sabi, alam natin na yung capital letter T is tall and small letter T is short. So, homozygous, parent number one, no? homozygous tall, capital T at capital T. Alright? So, andito, capital T and capital T. Homozygous tall. Parent number two. Alright? Sabi doon sa parent number two, balikan natin yung, no? balikan natin yung PowerPoint. Homozygous short. And alam natin na yung si short, ang gagamitin nating letter is small letter T. Tapos homozygous, meaning the same. So dapat, no, ang gagawin natin dito, no, si parent number 2, homozygous short. So, small. Tapos short kasi small letter T. Alright, ganun. Alright? So ito na yung genotype ni parent number 1 at ito na yung genotype ni parent number 2. Again, the letter T is tall and the, the, the capital T is tall and the small letter T is short. And again, alleles are in pairs, no? Pairs po. So, dapat dalawang letter. Hindi pwedeng pag-iisa na ganito. Sabi mo, letter T lang siya. Hindi. So, letter T, capital, and letter T, capital. Small letter T and small letter T. Alright, sulat ko na maayos to kasi. Alright, ganun. So, anong next natin gagawin? No, base doon sa sabi dito. So, one pair, write one pair in the upper part of the Punnett square and one pair in the left part of the Punnett square. So, either way, no, I just emphasize na lang na pag si parent 1, isulat natin sa taas. Alright? Si parent 2, isulat natin sa left. Alright? So, anong gagawin dito? Ito, wala, wala tayong isusulat dito. Wala tayong isusulat dyan. Dito lang yung mga isusulat natin. Parent number one, homozygous tall. So, ito, itong first T, sulat natin dito. Itong second letter T, sulat natin dito. Alright? So, andito na po. So, itong first T dito, nandoon. And itong ito, nandoon. And sabi daw doon sa instruction that the second one will go into right at one on the left. So, this small letter T na first, isulat natin dito. At saka yung isang small letter T naman, gamit natin, sulat natin dito. Alright? Pagpasensya. Alright. Anong gagawin natin next? So, ang gagawin natin today, uh, after that one, is we're going to do the Punnett Square Crossing. So, we have now the blanks in the middle, no? Which is actually, we're in, we're going to cross this time. So, Punnett Square Crossing, ito na yung mga ilalagay natin dito sa loob. <coughs> so, anong gagawin? I-cross lang natin. Alam ko, gets nyo ito eh. Alright? So, anong gagawin dito? 
Meron tayong capital T and small t. So, nandito siya. So, kuha tayo ng isa doon, kuha tayo ng isa dito. So, here, this one, no? This one here. Get one here and get one there. So, we have capital T and small letter T. No? So, itong din dito, dahil meron capital doon at small. Alright? Ito naman dito, kunin natin isa doon sa taas and isa dito sa baba. So, anong gagawin? Hmm? Capital T and small t naman. Dito, the same. So, dito yung answer dito. Kuha tayo dito at taka doon. So, meron tayong capital T and small t. And then again dito, kuha tayo doon sa taas and doon sa gilid. So, we have now capital T and small t. So, finally, meron tayong mga... Talaga, klaro ito. Alright. So, finally, meron tayong mga ganong answer na. Ito na yung actually yung four chances na pwede maging yung anak. Now, hindi nyo ma-appreciate ito. Pag yan lang yung makikita nyo. Anong, anong meaning, sir, ng capital T, small t, capital T, small t, capital T, small t, and capital T, small t? Anong meaning nun? Diyan na po papasok yung next step na sinasabi na ano, gagawin natin dito. Alright? Interpret the ratio of the genotype. So, ratio tayo. Paano gagawin yung ratio? Balikan natin dito. I'll just erase this one, no? Alam naman na natin ito, no? Gawin natin yun. So, kung meron na, pwede lang talaga yung face-to-face, -face, saka exercises nyo ito, meron tong Ngayon ang gumana nung... Alright, so, ano yung ratio? When you talk about ratio, genotype or pheno, well, sa genotypes, ano ba ratio? Yung mga anak noon may apat. So, pwede yung 3 is to 1, 2 is to 2, 1 is to 4, or 4 is to 0. So, makita natin genotype, no? Kuha tayo. Sulat natin yan. So, ilang ganun? Makita natin apat lahat. So, pwede natin sabihin na ganito is 4 is to 0. Ang ratio niya. Yan lang po ang answer actually doon sa number 5. No? So, yung genotype niya, capital T and small t, kasi yun nga lahat, apat sila na nasa loob. Alright? Na yung answer doon. Let's go now and interpret this time. No? Sabi dito sa number, uh, number 6, interpret the ratio of the phenotype referred to the video. Balikan natin. Ano naman yung phenotype? This time, kailangan nating malaman. No? I interpret. Now, this, now, here comes now what you call your law of dominance. Be mindful na hindi po pwedeng mag-mix, ah. Hindi po pa sinabi natin pag purple yung isa, ay yung, yung isang parent, white yung isang parent, yung lalabas light purple. Hindi po ganun. So, in this case, meron po tayong tinatawag na law of dominance. So, in this case po, sa law of dominance, as long as meron pong capital yun po ang masusunod. No? Capital letter. So, alam natin na si capital letter T ulit is tall. Sorry. And capital, a small letter T is short. So, may capital T, may small T. Then again, law of dominance. Kasi nga may capital T, sino ang mas mananaig? Si tall or si short? Alam natin na this one, kasi meron ang dominant na alil doon, this is tall. This one, because they are the same, this is again tall. This one is again the same as the rest. This is tall, also tall, and this is also tall. Despite na merong father, na mata, pure na matangkad, at merong mother na pure na pandak, ang chance pala na mga anak nila, no, kung lalabas yung anak na isa, no, lahat yung chance niya matangkad. Alright? matangkad lahat. So, therefore, ang tinotype, masasabi natin, tall. Kasi nga, interpretation na to. Tall. Tapos, ano? 4 is to 0. Right? 4 is to 0. So, yun po yung ratio. 
So this time, ito na po yung ratio. So genotype, ang gagamitin natin dito yung ano yung na-answer natin ng mga letters dito. Yung phenotype naman, interpret natin. Ano ba itong meaning na capital T, small t? Is it tall or short? Sabi ko nga, basta meron pang capital letter T dyan, or capital letters of whatever letter that we're going to use, kung anong naka-assign sa kanya na trait, yun po yung masusunod. Alright? So, doon po. So, last no part here is that answer the question based on the percentage. So, ang question po ng problem na yun, sinasabi niya, what are the chances of having tall of spring? Now, having tall of spring, andito po yung chances na maanyak niya. And lahat po, yung chance niya is, lahat po sila matatangkad. So, ano po yung answer doon? 100% chance of having tall. Alright? One, ano ba to? 100% po na lahat yung chance ng anak niya ay magiging matangkad. Alright? Medyo nakakalito pa to at the first, but let's try another problem. Alright? So, medyo kon lang to. Be, uh, medyo kon lang, tawag na to. Hinay-hinay lang natin, no? Na i-digest yung sinasabi ko. Alright. Let's, let's do one problem before we're going to end this one, no? Let's, uh, I made another problem. Alright? So, erase ko muna ito. Wait lang. Asad kasi yung nawawala kasi yung dito 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 nila anyway ano saan tayo Alright, so, dap dapat prepared kayo na gumawa kayo ng ganitong, ano? Alright, so, dapat, whenever you make another problem or you solve another problem, ready na yung panic screen nyo dapat. Para po lang ito. Alright, so, sabi dito sa problem na ito, no? Suppose a father is a homozygous short and the mother is heterozygous short. What are the chances of having tall offspring? Ngayon, si father, pure na pandak. Now, si mother naman, kasi heterozygous siya, hindi siya pure na pandak, hybrid siya na pandak. Hindi siya pure. Pure. So, paano natin ito masasabi? No? Anong? Ah, instead of using letter T, let's change this one to letter S. Oh, pwede natin actually i-change. Yung letters. Alright? Paano natin ito isosolve? So, ayun na. Na-change natin. Paano natin ito isosolve? Sabi dito, try muna natin alamin yung parent. Homozygous short. So, ganito na lang. No? Sulat ko dito sa... So, we're going to use letter S. Let's say that capital letter S is short and small letter S is tall. Balik, binaliktad natin. Right? So, small, short, sit it better this way. Ayun na lang. Masantay na lang. So, capital short, small letter tall. Alright, so, kilalanin natin ulit yung, ano, yung, yung parent. Yung isa, homozygous short. Pag homozygous short, meaning, homozygous, dapat parehas sila. And since short, Alam natin na capital letter S will mean short. Kasi homozygous, sulat natin na isang capital dito, capital doon. Alright? Alright, so, yun na nga, sabi natin homozygous short si parent number 1. Si father, sulat natin sa taas, 
homozygous meaning parehas, capital, tapos capital kasi yung short, kaya capital and capital. Alright? Hindi masyadong klaro. Binubura niya kasi. Alright. Never mind. Tapos, sabi naman dito, si mother is heterozygous short. So, pag sabi natin heterozygous short, no? heterozygous meaning not the same, so, pwede natin sabihin na capital S and small letter S. Yun. Nabago ito. So, meron tayo parent number 1, capital, capital, tapos capital and small. Alright? So, anong gagawin na to? Cross lang natin dito. We have your, ito capital, ito capital, so capital, capital. Alright? Ito capital, ito capital, so capital, and capital. Ay, sorry. Yes, capital and capital. Tapos, ito dito, isang capital, isang short, so capital and short. And this one, isang capital and short, so capital and short. So, makikita natin dito, I hope, klaro, capital and capital, capital and capital, capital and short, capital and short. So, ano bang genotypes natin? Pwede natin sabihin na si S, capital and S, capital, meron yung nag-exist, at saka, S, capital and S, capital is, ilan yung sa kanila? Dalawa sila, tapos, si isa naman si capital sorry, and small is 2. So, ito. Ito, capital and capital, kaya capital and capital. Small, uh, capital and small, capital and small, capital and small, capital and small. Ilan sila dito? Dalawa. Ilan sila dito? Dalawa. So, we can say that the ratio would be 2 is 2, 2. So, paano natin sulat yan? 2, colon, 2. Ito po nandito. 2, colon, 2. So, ito yung Erase na natin. Ito para hindi magulo. Right? So, yun na po yung genotype. Makita natin ang ratio is 2 is to 2. So, sa phenotype naman. Ngayon, interpretation na nung ano ito at ano ito. So, ito, ano ito? Capital and capital. And ano ba yung naka-assign kay capital? So, this one is short. This one is short. This one is short. And this one is again another short. Kasi nga, kahit may capital, may small, alam natin sa small letter is tall. Pero kasi may kasamang capital, masusunod si capital. Right? So, short, 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 short. So, ano masasabi natin dito? In terms of phenotype, 4.0, 4, hmm? 4, 4 is to 0 na short. Puro po panda. Ah, wala na talaga. <coughs> Puro na. Puro po pandak yung anak nila. So, try natin i-type ito sa, ano, type ito na lang sa, isod natin here. So, let's make another, another one. So, si homozygous short, no, is capital and capital. Alright? Tapos, ito namang si Tirozygous Short, no? Is capital and small. So, ayan na po. Ganun, no? So, tapos, yun lang, i-cross natin. I-cross natin ito sila. So, capital and capital, meron tayong dalawang capital. Alright? Dito naman sa kabila, cross natin ito. Sorry, kikita nyo ba ako? Alright, so, na. cross natin ito. Narinig nyo pa ba ako? Alright, so, narinig nyo pa pala ako. Alright, anyway, let's go back. So, Dito naman sa kabila, no? Cross natin yan. Capital, kasi capital itong nasa taas, and capital itong nandito. So, ito, cross natin ito dito. Alright, so, capital and capital. So, rehasin natin yung size. Rehas na ba? Okay. 
ito. Alright? Dito naman, meron tayong capital sa mataas at small letter dito. So, this will be capital and small. Right? So, ganito po yung combination niya. Tapos, dito naman po, you have your, ito, capital sa taas at small. So, dapat po, mauna lagi yung sinusulat natin yung capital. Small. Alright? So, ganun. So, yan na. Ito na yung crossing natin sa pocket square natin. So, in this case, no? Para may space tayo, tanggalin natin itong problem. So, anong tanong? Dapat short ito. Short. Dapat ito. Short. What are the chances of having short of spring? R. So, short tall. Yeah, let's stick with tall. Let's stick with tall. Tall na lang. Tall. Alright? So, anong gagawin natin dito? Alright, so. Tapos na tayo sa parents. Identifying the parent number 1, parent number 2 dito. Nag-cross na tayo. So, meron na tayong genotype nila. So, anong gagawin natin next? So, let me just delete this one. And let's put the genotype ratio. Alright? So, sa genotype ratio, lagay natin yung phenotype ratio naman sa baba. Alright? Ano ka? So, genotype ratio, ano bang meron? Meron tayong capital S. Meron tayong another capital S. Tayo, meron din tayo ito, another capital S, small s. And, kita natin ito, capital S and small s. So, ganun. So, malalaman natin na meron tayong ditong dalawa na magkaparehas. Dalawa sila. At ito naman, dal dalawa na magkaparehas din. So, we can say that there is what you call 2 is to 2 na ratio. Alright? In this case, sabi ko nga, whatever is the genotype is being influenced by your... So, puta natin yung... Ano? natin kalimutan yung interpretation that your capital S is short and your small s is tall. So, para ma hindi shot short. Why do you Ano makita? Alright. So, ganun po. Lagay natin ito sa baba. Para mas Alright, so, yan, palatandaan natin itong nasa baba. So, yung capital is a dominant allele, the small letter is a recessive allele. Alright. So, this is, par, ito parang yung question number 1, ito, question number 2. So, ano bang phenotype ratio? Alright, how do we interpret this one? Capital and capital, what is capital and capital? Sabi ko nga, basta may capital, susundin nyo yung capital. So, this is short. Huh? This one, ano naman to? Is also, capital and capital, sundin niya yung sino yung capital. In this case, alam natin si capital is short. So, this is also short. This one, capital and small, kahit may small siyang kasama, kasi since mas, masusunod pa rin si capital, ano si capital? Short. So, this is still short. Sorry. Okay. You need not write this one inside the Punnett square, ah. Nila, nilalagay ko lang to just for you pa. And this one is also short. So, ano yung phenotype? Alam natin, short, 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 short. Meron tayong apat dito. So, anong, anong, anong pwede natin sabihin, no? This is 4 is to 0, all short. Short, lahat. Pandak lahat yung anak. Kaya, punta tayo sa number 3. Ano ba yung tanong? Anong tanong doon sa problem na yun? Ang tanong is ito. What are the chances of having tall of spring? Tall. Ito yung tanong. What are the chances of having tall of spring? O, oh, tingnan natin. Ito short, ito short, ito short, ito short. So, what are the chances? In terms of percentage, ilalagay natin kasi ito in terms of percentage. So, kung ito pandak at naghanap din na matangkad, ano yung chance nila? No? And simply, the answer would be 0%. And you're done with solving the problem. 
try natin isolve itong nasa taas na yung unang pinakaunang problem. Here. So, kopyain ko to. So, sabi ito, homozygustol. Gagamitin natin letter T. So, tol, letter T for tall and small letter T for short. So, homozygustol. Dapat parehas. Okay, so natin ito. Natin ito. Tapos ito. So, let's go 30. Alright? So, ito. So, homozygustol. So, ito yung parent number 1. Itong blue. So, homozygustol nga. Capital T and capital T. Si mother naman is homozygous short. So, small letter T and small letter T. Homozygous parehas. Kung capital, uh, small, small dapat. Kung capital, capital. So, let's cross natin. Ito, ito, and ito. Oh no. Capital and small. This one, and this one, capital and small. This one, capital and small, and this one is capital and small. Alam nyo na yan. I hope na na-understand nyo na yun. Alright? So, yan. So, Anong gagawin natin dito afterwards na cross natin? Let's try to answer the... Alright. So, answer natin yung phenotype as genotype. Genotype ratio. Tapos, phenotype... Eh, sorry, wrong spelling. Phenotype ratio. Ratio. Alright. So, genotype, makita natin ganito. Oh, parehas na sila lahat. Wala na mga ibang combination yung iba. So, masasabi natin yung ganito is 4 is to 0 ratio. Bakit ratio and ratio? Alright? Or pwede natin lagyan ng ganun. For us, so, phenotype. Ano naman sa phenotype? Oh, how do we interpret this one? Sabi ko nga, basta merong capital, sundin niya yung ano yung description ng capital. So, this one is tall. This one. This one is also tall. Kasi alam natin na parehas sila ng combination lahat. Lahat ito, tall. Alright? And this one is also another tall. So, yun na. So, ito masasabi natin lahat sila matangkad. So, sabi natin, yung phenotype niya, tall equals 4 is to 0 ratio din. Alright? Lastly, let's answer the question. Ano bang question dito? What are the chances of having tall offspring? What are the chances based on your one, your Punnett square? No chance nito? So, lahat kasi magiging matangkad, kaya chances are 100%. Alright? So, I hope na nakuha yun. Ganun na po siya style. No? Na, so, ito yung parang sabihin natin. Question number 1, question number 2, question number 3. I will be devising, no, paano natin answeran ito based sa quiper nyo. Kaya medyo gagawa ko ng mga kukulupan, no, isang, isang question pero ang daming sagutin, no. Because then again, hindi naman tayo pwede, kung pwede lang lahat mag-online face-to-face, mas maganda yon. But then, ganito. Alright, so ito pong tinatawag natin law of dominance. No? So, I hope na medyo napagod ako sa pagtuturo nito kasi it, it needs more, uh, of a demonstration rather than ano, rather than yung simple na lecture lang and whatever. So, I hope na na-gets na nyo. If hindi nyo na-gets, pwede kayong mag-PM sa akin using your messenger from your uh, from your paper accounts or maybe PM me in, the, in Facebook. So, or whatever means that you need to contact me para lang mas maintindi niya. I'll be willing to, ano, to teach you more about this one. So, I'll be giving more examples of this one, no? However, this is just what part 1 of the part 2 kasi meron pa tayong dalawang laws na iwan. So, I will be combining those laws. However, ganito lang po. So, without further much ado, good afternoon once again and happy learning. Take care and God bless.